All right, this is what it is. It's going down. Boy, Ella, uh, you know, you might hear planes fly by. I live in the hood. Might hear gunshots. Might hear anything. But for the sake of doing it, first episode, let's do it. Ah, Ella G, thought of the day. Welcome to the first episode. Well, we're going to have a bunch of topics. You know, I'm going to keep it in the realm of hip-hop and sports. That's it. So there's quite a few things I want to say. I want to thank everybody that told me to do this. Um, this whole thing is brought to you by I'm More Entertainment. Just me. You know, also we will go down the line of our other sponsors of the show. Right? Yeah. So, let's start it off with the mayor of New York, Eric Adams. He's going after drill music, the artists, you know, taking their music down. Now, this one is a... You got to think about this one for a minute. One, naturally, we have to protect our rights as Americans to be able to say what we want to say. True. You know, they don't have this enthusiasm. My feeling is they don't have this enthusiasm about going after the Klan or anybody who speaks, you know, crazy and everything. So, you know. I was talking to a friend about that and he was like, yo, you know, I know everybody's talking about the killings and so on and so forth. You are correct. But still at the same point, they don't go after the clan like that. A lot of these dudes are, you know, officers and judges and something like, you know, stuff like that, that, you know, they don't really hunt them down and choice that. Now it is crazy. Let's not forget. It is crazy. You know, I should have put a timer on this thing to, uh, do this about five minutes but but it is crazy of how these young men young black men are dying at a rapid pace doing drill music like i don't understand it you know to from a person being from the street and making that mistake you should know you know i don't understand why the ogs in your hood don't tell you that the street life is the same as the mafia. It's something that should not be in the forefront. That's not that's not what you want. It should not be in the forefront at all. It definitely it should be where it is. You know, um you got to you got to tame that down. Because you dudes are actually speaking the things you're doing to a beat. And, you know, you're going to jail. I don't want to see you guys go to jail. You know, I wish there was airplane. Told you. If you hear it. If you don't hear it, then I look crazy right now on film. But, you know, I don't want to see these young black men go to jail. I don't want to see them make the mistakes I had or whatever. You know, there's, there's so much information out there. You know, but still, people, you know, what are you looking at on the internet? You know, what are you feeding your brain? You know, I understand you see so-and-so and and -and so-and-so, they do it and it looks like they have a lot of money, they're traveling, what's the name? But the drama don't stop. Y'all making this state to state and all these different places. It is out of control. If you're going to make money, make money. Drama causes problems. War costs money. And you're spending a lot of money to cause war against yourselves. And I think that's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. But because if this happens, if they're able to pull the music down, you know, DJs, maybe, you you know, the shouldn't play it, let it stay an underground thing. Because they're going to go after other things after that. If that happens, if that occurs. Um, Some, I know we can't save everybody. You know, sometimes, you know, you know, giving them information to do better because it's, it's so much out there about you know, uh, you know, controlling your own destiny, you know, being able to invest, 
you know, not run into the first deal you may get. But some of them is just bad apples. And that's what they want because it goes back to this is what they see. And it just have to do better. You know? Excuse me. So, um, make sure you leave your comments about that. I want to know what do you guys feel on Mayor Eric Adams going after drill music, trying to get all these websites to pull the music down and DJs, you know, uh, a DJ in New York said he's not going to play drill music anymore. Let me know uh, in the comments about that. So, we're going to move on to something else. Kodak Black get shot outside of Justin Bieber's party. Wow. Another plane, just in case. Um, this is absolutely crazy to me. What are we doing? What are we doing that there's a fight? You know how crazy that sounds? A fight on the outside of a Justin Bieber party in LA. That sounds absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Why are we fighting at Justin Bieber parties outside? Why are we why are we doing this? This is it's I, I don't get it. Please make me understand why are we doing the dance? And then why is there a gun involved? Like y'all can't y'all can't dance and just that's it. Everybody gotta go grab a hammer. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say it, but I am leading to the say it. I'm leading to the say it. Great English, Ella. Great English. But I'm leading to the say it. What? What? In my day, we could dance with the hands. I mean, does it does it gotta be a shot? Like, wait, did y'all have the guns inside Justin Bieber party? Are y'all dancing and like, do just pay, just listen to how that sounds. We got the hammer inside of Justin. When Justin Bieber parties became dangerous, that we need hammers on the insides. I get it. People are celebrities. Celebrities need to have security. But you should have a licensed gun and know when to draw it. Like every scuffle? Nah, that's a homie who did that. And that homie is going to cause issues. That is going to cause a whole different problem. It's a sad, sad day. A very sad day. When you have to bring a hammer to a Justin Bieber party. In California. We got to do better. What are we doing? We have to do better. Keep the hood shit in the hood. You're supposed to be uh, meeting people and talking. Why, what, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what's, what's going on? This ain't the projects. It ain't the ghetto trying to push your brand and your business to another level, meeting different people. But now, you gotta get outside. And you gotta show your nigga them. And fight. And pop something. Crazy. Keep the hood shit in the hood. See what happened with the baby. Baby got into it with in the inside the thing. They dance, yeah, they jump dude. You know? I think it's funny, but they pulled his hair and threw him on the down and watched him slide and hell of a, a hell of a situation. But it's crazy. Keep the hood shit in the hood. You know, if y'all have an issue, pull each other to the side. If it's that bad, dance like men. Dance like men, get it out of your system. Not at these parties though. I don't care what party it is. It don't have to be a Justin Bieber party. It could just be any party. Come on, man, if it's that serious, dance like men. That's it. 
You know, I got money. Get your game up. Get your boxing game up. It's your hand skill game. You shouldn't be fighting. You could talk it out anyway. Moving on. Let's move on to some sports situation. Um, the Brooklyn Nets has traded James Harden for Ben Simmons. Right. Now, who do you think got the better trade? The Nets or the 76ers? Now, James Harden has been doing his numbers, but for some reason they feel he's a distraction. Every team we've been on has been some sort of distraction, and it's, eh, you know, me personally, me, me as a sports fan, personally, I know I'm going past the thing, but if James Harden would have stayed with KD and, and the other guy that's in L.A. right now, in Oklahoma City, I'm telling you, I truly believe they would have got a ring because they was right there. They just got frustrated in two years. You know, another piece or two, they would have been right there. They would have got it. But no, like a typical individual, people want things for themselves. And you know, you just going for stats, you ain't looking at the ring. The whole purpose is to play in the league is to get the ring. The money will come. You could have talked crazy and got a, you know more money and all, so on and so forth. Get the ring, baby. Get the Mr. Matamata ring. That's my fake curse word because I'm trying not to curse. You know, we're going to try to monetize this. Try not to curse. How about that? So if you hear me come up with words like Matamata, it means mother in a different in a different time and language. But Ben Simmons, everybody calling him scared boy. You know, he hasn't been playing. Stat shows nothing right now. Only thing I can say is, we will see. I actually don't give a fafa fufa about the Nets anyway, no matter if they're winning or not. I am a hardcore, diehard Knicks fan. Yes, I know. You can say what you want to say. Holla at you want to holla. Don't care. Been a Knicks fan since a teenager. Whatever. I know we ain't winning a long time, but it's just Knicks. You know, if the Nets happen to do something, yay. Slap Hosey Bacon, great. Black Power, yay. But I am a diehard Knicks fan. The Knicks suck. Yabba yabba yabba. Oh my God. God, what are they doing? I'm tired of, as a Knicks fan, I am tired of yelling at the TV. This is why I don't watch their games. Even when I was locked up, oh, they knew I was watching the Nick game because I would be yelling at the TV. Jesus, Hezekiah Christ, man. What are y'all doing? I just watched two recent games and they blew 20 point leads on the Lakers and I believe the Jazz. Whoever they were. But we wound up losing. How do you lose a 20 point lead? What do you just run out of gas? You just get stupid in the second half? I I don't I just don't get I just don't get it. How did this occur? What are y'all doing? Eat an apple, a vitamin. Some juice or something. Something. How do y'all play so good in the first half and then like a crackhead in the second half? How did this occur? Please, someone tell me. And, and the management, they can suck a horse yama yama because they don't care. They don't care. I know I'm gonna repeat this numerous times. Why? Because I'm a Nick fan and has nothing changed. Management doesn't care because the garden fills up regardless. Regardless. Do y'all know? I mean, y'all know if you're not in New York, you don't know, but the garden fills up 
no matter how bad the Knicks are playing. It's a stage. It's a stage and everybody still want to have the hopes and dreams that these punk mothers, Sama Lima Lama, will get a streak on and do something. Knicks, do something. Do something. Get better. How do you have... <laughs> They said on ESPN, the whole Knicks is up for trading. Ah, do you hear the ghettos? The ghetto siren of the hood added with the plane. I don't know if you hear this stuff, but if y'all do, yeah, it's going down. But I digress. You know, football ain't going on well. Super Bowl, whatever. The Giants ain't in it, so I can't talk about the Giants. They suck yak yama yama too. Anyway, at least we got four rings with the Giants. Four rings. So everybody that I have beef with, football wise, just understand if we going at it each other. Notice I've been very quiet this season, past couple of seasons actually. But if you don't have four rings and better, don't talk to me. Shut it up. Don't talk to me at all. Thank you. My homeboys, y'all know who, who you are. We beef every season in the beginning of the season about our teams. Football season comes. You're not my friend. That's it. So just to let you know what teams that I have beef with that I don't like because of either family members or friends, right? It's the Patriots, number one. Number one, and we beat them twice for the Super Bowl. So, you may got all the rings, but shut up. We beat y'all twice. The Patriots, the Eagles, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Washington football team, which is the dumbest name ever, and the Dallas Cowboys. I don't like you. I think added on to it is, uh, unfortunately, because I, you know, him, his little son is my boy, but I think I had to probably add the um, Cleveland Browns to this list. But other than that, it is what it is. Don't ask me about no other football team because I don't care. I don't care. I will not report it. All I care is about New York teams. So don't ask me. I don't care. Moving on. Leave your comments about the... Uh, Nets, the Nets trade along with that. Okay, here's a good one. Uncle Snoop, Snoop Doggy Dog or Snoop Dog now owns Death Row. Let's give it up for that. Hopefully I have an applause sound or something like that. Just throw that in there. But um, yeah. That is, that's awesome, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. A label he started off with, started off with his career, and now he owns it. Now, I don't know if he owns the catalog. They don't say it hasn't, you know, there's no new information if he owns the catalog. If he owns the catalog, he doing that. Just shut, everybody shut up. If Uncle Snoop gets the catalog, shut it up. That is... That is a big thing if he has that. Okay. Whoa, that sounds crazy. Pause. Um, yeah, that would be super dope musically if he has the catalog. Now, you know, for those that look at my page on uh, Instagram, which is Illogy 2 k it should be flashing somewhere along the screen right now. Um, My question is, is what type of label owner will he be now he seems the good and the bad when he was with death row you know he did an interview speaking about the difference when he was with death row he talked about you know when they bought like death row was leasing houses you know he wanted a house they would lease the house they wouldn't buy it outright and it wasn't in his name um he didn't get royalties for the chronic or doggy style, which is absolutely crazy. 
But when he went with Master P, Master P got him a bank account in his name, house in his name, car in his name. So, you know, also at the same time, according to what certain folks have said, you know, he also kind of, you know, we don't know if it's true or not, but I'm just putting it what they said is that, you know, he did, um, you know, tradey dirty, you know what I'm saying? The, the, I forgot the name of the piece they had or the label he had at the time, but he gave Trey D a piece, you know, the, the record he did with Snoop with Trey D and Goldie Loke with Platinum. They got 40 racks after that, they ain't get nothing else after that. And then, you know, when things got bad, he went to go hop the chain and it was glass. Not a good look, Uncle Snoop. Not a good look. But that was according to Goldie Loke. So, which uh, label owner will he be? Will he teach his new artists how to get money? Or will he treat it like any other person and give them shitty contracts? And later down the line, they probably will have to sue him or they're going to have to eat that, you know, because it's a, a very dirty game. You know, that money given out is a loan and they got to pay it back. And what you have to pay it back with is how much you get off a sale of each album or project of what you're doing. Right. That's something. That's something. How will that go down? That is going to be crazy. But time will tell, and we'll see. Okay, I want to let you know this uh, This episode is also brought to you by, and you will hear this often and all the time, it is brought to you by Illa Apparel. Look at the logo, bow, Illa G, the logo. It might look backwards, whatever, where, however it is. But it is a signature lo- um, Illa G logo shirt. You can go to IllaApparel.net and uh, get your shirts. We have t-shirts, we have bikinis, we have everything, you know, uh, grilling aprons, you know, a lot of different things for sneakers, hats, hoodies, sweaters, got all the stuff. Once again, go to illaapparel.net and it's also brought to you by illag.net, my website. Go to the website. If you're a fan, a true fan of Illogy music, go to illag.net. You know, listen to some songs. You know, if you're a part of the Illa Army, the Illa Army is people who exclusively, no matter what I drop, will buy it. That is an Illa Army. You know what I'm saying? There's things for the Illa Army. Also, you know, music there. You know, you can check out my web series called New York Minute on Illa G TV on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, click the button, click the link, and be notified when I do other things. I have a whole bunch of shows on here. Like I said, my website, my website, my web series, New York Minute, which is, you know, we're gonna continue to film three, season three. So don't ask me, we're gonna continue. It will drop this year sometime. We're gonna get to that. And, uh, you know, make sure you subscribe, like it, leave a comment at the bottom. It helps with the algorithm so people can see the episode. You ask for me to do a podcast, the podcast is here. Now, what else we going to? Um, Ice T put out street warnings for everybody going to the Super Bowl. Um, yeah, y'all need to recognize this. I know you're going to have a good time and enjoy, but there's a thing in the street that we call wolves. And when things happen like that in every city, every city has a ghetto. Every city has wolves. And y'all need to be on point of these wolves when you're going out in different places and partying. Be careful. If you're not a wolf and you don't understand, I know you're there to have a good time. Be careful. Especially the big major cities, it's going to be on. Some way, shape, or form. Be careful. Make sure you're in groups. Make sure, you know, you get to your destination, get inside the destination. Hopefully, it don't be a fight outside the destination. Notice how I threw that in there. And then, you know, get back to where you need to be as soon as possible. And talk about it, party, get drunk inside uh, the area. Do that. Because you don't want to be victimized in the town you're in 
and be on the other side of these Super Bowl stories that it came into your town. Just remember that. So, no matter what city the Super Bowl is in, next year, this year, how the year, when the year, be absolutely safe and careful. Great job, Uncle Ice-T, for putting that out there. You know, it should be said in every city. Just letting you know, every city should have that out there. Um, let's, what about the last but not least, let's, uh, realizing the importance of hip hop in today's society. Now that is something. Do you realize the importance of hip hop in today's society? I mean, it's everywhere. You know, they, they, you know, talking about it that, you know, hip hop is going to be in the Super Bowl. Well, this is, this is dropping the day after. So I'm, I'm absolutely not surprised because hip hop has been, you know, an incredible business wise genre of music for quite some time. And, you know, do, do you do more? As, you know, as gatekeepers and everything, do you do more? Do you be careful of what you say? I mean, it's all dependent on the individu individual. Who I was about to mess that up. But I corrected. But yeah, it's all on the individual. What are you trying to say? But also, it's what people want to hear. You know, you can, you know, I feel that now time in the 90s, a lot of people talked about the pain it went through. And it got looked at as glorified. And so the next generation wanted to glorify it a little more. You know, of course you want to celebrate, you know, the cars and the girls and the what's name you have, because that's what you see when you see it. It's, I mean, it's numerous poets, artists, you know, writers talked about it all the time. It's what you see. It's what you're attracted to. So that's what you talk about. You know, as you get older and you go through some pain, then you start talking about the pain or know how to do it. Like I'm just, even now at 50, well, I ain't 50 yet, but I'm getting close to it. But well, I'll turn 50 this year. I'm just saying, even that, it's like I'm just learning how to speak of my uh, encounters and what I learned from these things. You know, before I would, you know, just when I just kept it emceeing because I didn't want to talk about the street life because the street life, like I said earlier, should not be in the forefront. But now I'm just looking at it as, let me just tell my story of situations I've been through and what did I see? What did I experience? What did I learn from the experience? But it does affect, you know, a certain artist you admire. If you start talking about health, the people that follow his music or follow his life will start doing, maybe will listen and be like, well, you know, Illa's doing healthy stuff. Let me get let me get on my game. You know, especially us that's entering 40s and 50s. You got to be healthy, man. You don't want to be the person that's not using your muscles and wind up being, you know, slumped over walking down the block. No control of your bones. Your muscles defeated. People come push you on the ground. You know, <laughs> I'm not trying to be abused, man. You know, if I can if I can talk my way out of it, I can. If I can't, then somebody got to get knocked the wiggy bigger out. You don't want that to happen, but you need to understand, yeah, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. I will be no one's weak, weak old man. Get out of here, old man. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Let's just leave it at that. But yeah. Leave a comment on that. Do you think, what do you think about that? The effects of lifestyle. In today's society, it's everywhere. You see us everywhere. Cereal, all sorts of stuff. So, you know what? Let's just leave it there. Um, I'm glad I got through this. Um, I kind of enjoyed talking like this on here. You know what I'm saying? Um, thought of the day. Thank you for watching. Make sure you share. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out all the websites that I told you about, you know, the Illa Apparel, illogy.net, 
Illogy TV here. You know, I got a bunch of rap videos on here. You know, make sure you go support the project I just put out. <laughs> Vocabulary, Hercules, you know, singles, everything is out. You know what I'm saying? Read the words, read everything. Check it out. Give time. You know, look at it. Digest it. Understand what your favorite song is. With that, I purely say, you know, for all the new people, you're not going to understand it. you got to be a true LFG fan to understand this. I will be saying this on at the end of every episode. Salute, slap hoes, eat bacon. I don't even eat bacon. It has nothing to do with that. I will explain it at another time, but that's what it is. Your boy, Ella. Thought of the day. First episode. Let's go. Thank you.